how much are you worth? How much can you be rewarded? How much do you think your gift is worth? We have been communicating and talking on this series of value. And as we have been talking and communicating, there are a lot of things that I have come to understand. And also, I believe you have come to understand. We spoke of environment. We spoke of association. We spoke also on the aspect of you developing yourself and coming to a place whereby or a, a level whereby you, you, you have, you have mastered your skills. You have mastered your talents and you have mastered your, your strengths. And today we are really going to go a length into one of the most important things that you have to grasp as a person with a vision. One of the things that you have to consider as a person who's carrying a vision and as a person who has a gifting. Because it's not just enough to be gifted. We have a lot of people that are gifted, but they are not fulfilled. We have a lot of people, when you see them in life, they are gifted, but it seems as if they are living a life that is limited. They are living a life without fulfillment. And one of the things that we are going to talk about is the reason why many people are gifted, talented, but their lives seems as if there is nothing tangible that is happening. We are talking about a vision. Most of the times when we speak about a vision, there are things that are considered. There is a statement I would always say that direction is better than speed. When a person does not have a vision, it does not matter how much fast and how fast they are because they do not have direction. It is your vision that determines your direction. It is your vision that determines also your clarity. Without a vision, you start any project, you, you, you pursue any dream, but there won't be any tangible achievement. There won't be any tangible fulfillment because you are pursuing a vision. What is a vision without direction? Let us take our Bibles to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Let's hear what the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse number 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse number 2. When you read your Bible, the Lord began to speak to the prophet Habakkuk. And the Bible declares and God said to Habakkuk, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, engrave it plainly. Engrave it plainly on a clay tablet so that he that sees it may run with it. God has already shown Habakkuk the vision. But there are instructions that begins to come because most of the times visions are imaginations. That imagination that you have. That imagination of that house, that imagination of that dream, that imagination that you are having to see yourself in the next five years. That is the vision we are talking about. And everyone you see in life has got a vision. The person who has started a business in a, in, in a township has, has a vision. A person who has started a football team has a vision. A person who's going to school, have they have a vision. The reason they are going to school, they have seen a vision of what they want to be in the future, what they want to achieve in the future. So that that will be the drive that drives them and that will be the, the, you know, the yardstick to see, for them to see what is it that they can achieve and how much they can be able to push and pursue. Without a vision, you have no drive because it is the vision that pushes you over things that you ought to, you know, if you want to achieve anything, the vision is needed. Why is the vision needed? Why is it needed? Because it is the one that drives you to say, if really I have a vision to becoming a millionaire one day, if really I have a vision that my dream will be fulfilled, then I have to put an extra effort. I have to do what others are not doing. It shows that you are different. It shows that you are not like other people. So many people, when you look at them, that is the biggest limitation they have. 
Many people are limited and what's limit, what limits them is that aspect of them not coming to a place where they really get to have a vision. And there are three things that the scripture spoke about as we're speaking about a vision. I want you to look at these three things and we are really going to explain them as we go. Let's go on, on that scripture again. You know, God said to him, write the vision down. Write the vision down. Write the vision down. That was the first word that said, God said to him, you, have, you already have the vision. You have set down, you have imagined what you want to be, what you believe you can be. But the Lord then gave him an instruction. Write it down. Many people do not love to document things down. I've, I've, I've really been around many people who speak about being successful but you see their commitment to their destiny and their dream by their by the way they want to document things down have you ever seen people with businesses but they if you ask them how are your you know your 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 cash books they they they, they can never account even for how money is flowing in the business and you can see without any further investigations that this person is going nowhere because there's no accountability where there's no accountability, there's no discipline. And where there's no discipline, you are bound to fail. It, being in a place or in a, at a company where the boss does not have discipline, it leads everyone else who's under that company to come to a place where they become also indisciplined. A leader without discipline will never train disciples because for there to be disciples, there has to be a discipline. Even if you, no matter how much you may set principles, no matter how much you may set rules, as long as you are in an environment where there are no proper, you know, th there is no discipline from the top, it is impossible for you to see everyone else who's around that company coming to a place where they can be, you know, disciplined. So the Bible says, write the vision down. Write the vision down. So, you know, when you write the vision down, you need to understand something about writing the vision down. There are three things that I'm really going to explain as we talk about writing the vision down. The first thing that the Bible speaks, when you take your Bible to the book of Luke chapter number 14 from verse 28, the Bible gives us a very good example. The Bible says, For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower for his gods, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to finish it? You know, which one of you, when he wants to build a project, you want to build a business, you want to build a career, you want to build a, a home, a marriage, a legacy, even you want to be anything that is to be built and anything that you want to build. The Bible says, which one of you, when you want to build, will not sit down and calculate? No matter how much you might be gifted, no matter how much you might have a dream, no matter how much you might have a desire to build anything that you would want to build, as long as you do not have the discipline and you, 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 you are not a realistic person that you sit down and calculate. It is, building anything in life, it is not about what you feel. It is not about what is in your mind. It is about can you do it? Can you do it? Many people, many people bought houses by loan that they could not pay off. I always say to people, if you cannot pay it off, don't buy it. Many people have gone through that way and we see consistently the repercussions of those actions. Consistent repercussions of those actions. So we, he who builds a house must first calculate, am I able to come to a place that I can finish that which I'm about to build? Are you able to finish it? It is a question that you have to answer yourself as the person who's building the dream that you are building. It's something that you have to answer yourself. As the person who's building the vision that you are trying to build, are you able to finish 
that which you want to build. Because you have to have order. There has to be order. There has to be a paper trail. Write the vision down. It has to be written down. There has to be that order. There has to be that, that, that flow, you know. Write the vision down. Are you writing it down? Are you, are you, are you that person who is order enough that when you look at your things, there is a paper trail? There is a consistent record so that even if we might miss the mark, but we know what is it that you really want to do. Sometimes, you know, people sit down with people and they start telling them, I want to build this, I want to build this. But when you really get to sit down with them, you'd realize that they don't even have, you know, a context of what they want to do. So when you're writing the vision down, what are you writing down? You are researching. You have to research in what you want to do. You have to research in what you want to do. You have to have order and you have to be disciplined enough to research. This business that I want to get into, am I able to finish it? Am I able to finish this business that I want to get into? You have to have that discipline to research. Am I communicating to somebody? Then the second thing, when you read the scripture that we went on in Habakkuk chapter number 2 verse 2, you, you, you would see that you would see that while at least we were going through that aspect, the Bible declares, the Bible declares that God said to him, as you, as you write the vision down, don't just write, write the vision down so that and engrave it plainly. Engrave it plainly. It has to be plain. Whatever that you have to do, it has to be plain enough in order for anyone who is to run with that vision, anyone who is to run with that vision has to know and see what is it that, that they have to do. Sometimes, you know, you get to be around people that say that they have dreams. You get to be around people that say that they have visions. And when you hear them speak their vision, you don't even understand. It's not plain. And sometimes, no matter how much you want to help a person, you get to a point whereby you feel like I can't help anything because whatever they are saying is not clear. What they really want you to help them, it's not even clear. So you, you, you fail now to find your place in whatever they are doing. Say, so what is it that I can do? How am I going to help? You, you fail at all to find, you know, you fail to find, you fail to find your place to say, what is it that I can do here? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you, 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 are, you, are trying to, you are trying to explain what you want to do, but people cannot get it because it's not plain, it's not clear. So if it's not clear, the reason why it's being said it's clear, it has to be, you know, when you read your Bible, I want you to take your Bible right now to the book of um, Genesis. I want you to take your Bible, the book of Genesis. When you go to the book of Genesis, you'd realize that when you take your Bible, the Bible speaks in the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 6, verse 14. When God was saying to Noah, Noah, I want you to get to a place where you make yourself an ark of gopher wood. All right. Specifics. I wanted to look at the specifics. How specific God was when he was telling Noah to build the ark. God was very specific. He, was, he went into detail. Now, imagine if God could go into detail. Imagine if God could go into detail. He told him, I want you to go and make yourself an ark with wood and make rooms of store pans, crops, nests, and cages, you know, and compartments. And caught it inside and... Uh, and he spoke with pitch. You must coat it with pitch. God specifically told him, when you are coating, don't coat with anything else. Coat with pitch. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says, this is the way you will make it. The length of the ark shall be, shall be 300 cubits. Its width shall be 50 cubits. And its height shall be 30 cubits. I want you to look at that. I want you to look at that. God was very specific. Verse 16, you shall make a window for light and ventilation for the ark and finish it at least a cubit eight inches from the top and eight and set the entry door of the ark inside. You shall make it with lower second and third decks. 
This is God who is speaking in specifics, telling a man how he wants a vision to be built. How he wants a vision to be built. So imagine if this is God who is specifically telling Noah, telling him in, in specifics, how much about you as you are trying to build your vision? If God would come to Noah, someone who did not know how to build whatever that God wanted him to build, and God would come to him and God would start specifically telling him everything in detail. Everything in detail. This shows you that, this shows you that as a person, you have to come to a place where you become so clear. You have to come to a place where you research what you want to do. Research all the raw materials and where you are to get every material that is needed to build what you want to build. Research and get every material that is needed. And when you get every material that is needed, then that is when you can get to a place to say, all right, now I'm building. All right, now I'm building. Somebody is now laughing because now we are talking about building. Now we are building. But for you to get to that place of building, there is a whole way that I've been explaining. What I've been explaining. Is your vision that clear that if I come right now into your organization, into your company, into your business, if I would come right now into your ministry, if I would come right now into your life, it would be easy for me to help you without a lot of stress, without asking too many questions. But just by sitting down one meeting with you, I'll be able to get where you are going in life. I'll be able to see. So write it down and write it plainly. Let it be plain. Let it be plain. Let it be plain. Am I communicating to somebody? Let that vision be plain. The Bible says so. Write it plainly so that he that sees it. When we talk about a vision, you have to understand that people see you before they hear you. People see you before they help you. Many people, what I have seen with many people that seem to have big visions, they do not know excellence. They, they, they don't know how to work on excellence. Obviously, excellence is, excellence is, um, is expensive because you have to invest in your excellence. If it is that it's your dressing, it has to be invested into. When you read your Bible, even let, 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 let's talk about David. The Bible says, so Jesse sent a word and brought him. Now he had a ruddy complexion with beautiful eyes, handsome appearance. And the Lord said to Samuel, arise, anoint him, for he is the one. Before he was picked, the Bible began to explain of his representation. He had a representation that was irresistible. He had a representation that even if you didn't want to invest in David, you were forced to invest. Bible says he was handsome. He had beautiful eyes. He had a ruddy complexion. I believe if they would explain, they would go on and on and on and on and on. Explaining about David. They would go on and on and on and on. Explaining about David. And it's a question that I want to ask somebody who is listening to me right now. Are you sure that when we try to look at your vision, if we want to follow your vision, you, you are at that place, you, you are in that environment that look just looking at you, your representation, the way you present your company, the way, the way you are, because you are the first ambassador of your vision, you are the first ambassador of your ideas. Are you sure I can buy before I hear what you have to say, before I hear your intelligence, before I hear how, you know, how erratic you are before I hear how much you, you, you know, you, you are a salesperson. I need to look. There are certain places where if you don't wear a certain kind of a dressing, a certain attire, there's no way they can hire you. You can't go to an interview wearing shorts. There has to be a dressing that you have to wear. So it is the same. You have to be able to represent yourself. I want you to take your Bible. Let me show you something. Let's go to the book of Kings. Let's go to the book of Kings. First Kings chapter number 10 from verse number 4. First Kings chapter number 10 from verse number 4. The Bible says, when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, had what? Seen. 
the wisdom of Solomon was not just a head, it was seen. The wisdom of Solomon. It was seen. It was visible. He, 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 he was able to change his wisdom into something tangible. He was able to change his wisdom into something. Do you know there are people that they are good at, if they can tell you what they can do, if they can tell you the things that they can do, you will be so much surprised. But when it comes to execution, they can't execute anything. So the wisdom of Solomon was seen. We have to see before we 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 we, we buy the idea. We want to see something. I, I want you to show. I want to show you the representation of Solomon. All right. Let's see the representation of Solomon. The Bible says it was seen. All the wisdom of Solomon was seen. It was seen. All right. And the house palace which he had built, the house palace that he had built. So. His wisdom now, you could see it through his building. The structure. The, stru the structure has to be clear. For me to follow, for me to run with a vision, your structure has to be clear. It might be your structure of your company, but let's go through this. So the building or the house he had built, it represented his wisdom. So, before I could, before anyone could sit down with Solomon, with seeing the environment, you could tap into the man's vision. You would understand his level, his level of excellence. All right, the Bible says the food at his table. I want you to look at this. It's this is the wisdom of Solomon that is being translated into into tangible things. When you have a vision. We have to start to see with what you do with the environment of where you are. The food of his table. Diet. Diet. Your diet determines your vision. You cannot be an athlete and be eating anyhow. If you really have a vision that you want to achieve, we will see with your diet. All right? The sitting of the servants, the court officials, and the attendants of his waiters. The people that are around you. There are people that are wealthy, but when you look at their relatives, their children, when you look at even their parents, you are surprised. You really see this person does not have a vision because your vision must be able to affect those around you. But if you are the only one who looks good, there is some selfishness there. It is not a vision. We cannot take you serious as a leader. There are people in a company where it's bringing millions, but you know when you look at the workers, you are surprised. What is it? What are they, they being paid for? The Bible says the attire of his the, uh, and the attires, those, those were the people that were working. The cup bearers, people that are ready to sacrifice the vision, you will see from the way they are dressed. His stay away by the way he went to the house of the Lord. There has to be a devotion. What is it that you believe in? What, be, what, what is it the Bible says? The way he went to the to the house of the Lord, she was breathless and old and wonder of it. She was breathless. What is it that you believe in? You know, it's a problem when you when, when you say you have a vision, but there is no belief system on you. Many people without a belief system, they are not they are not uh, consistent and they are not stable. If you want to see people that always change his ideas every day, they are not consistent. They are not stable. If you are at a place where you are stable, we will see. Stability is seen. You, you cannot fake stability. What is your belief system? Your belief system determines your backbone. It is your belief system. So as you build the vision, we, we, we see the vision shaping the person and the first thing that we see, the representation of the future of where you want to take us, where you have been. Because when you come and tell us a vision, you are taking us to where you have been. So we have to see how it has affected you in the way you dress, in the way you talk to people, in the way uh, you, you articulate and solve problems. Your vision is go. We have to see your vision overflowing from the inside of you. That is the only way value can be increased. Many people, you cannot pay them. You cannot hire them because of certain things. The third thing, the Bible says, the Bible says, so that he that sees it may do what? May run with it. May run with it. The, what I've just shared, 
This is one of the things that will make helpers to come. This is one of the things that will make people that would want to help you in anything that you do to help you. So that he that sees your vision may run with it. How can I run with a vision that is not realistic? Because for me to run, the vision has got to be realistic. You can't tell me run to run to Brazil. It's 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 an unrealistic vision. So if people are to push your vision, run with your vision, it has to be realistic. It has to be something that is achievable. We can't run to a place we do not know. We can't run to a place we know that we cannot be. It has to be something that is approachable. We are running to a certain point. The point is approachable. The point is reachable. Runners will not just come and be running because there are people that run without direction. We are running towards your vision. But as a CEO, as a head of an organization, the vision you are bringing to us, is it a vision that is... That if we run with your vision, are we able to reach somewhere with the vision? Are we able to reach somewhere? <laughs> are we able to reach somewhere? Some of you are working in companies where you, you, are, you are going to work every, every day. But in as much as you are going to work, it seems as if there is, you know, that thing, there is nothing to really show over what are you going to do? Why are you going to work? Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? As you want to be a person who people will reward you with your vision, you have to understand that the concept of being reliable. People want to deal and work with people that are real, reliable. There are people that are professionals. They have good professions. But no one takes them serious. No one comes to a place where they pay them because they end reliable. They end reliable. Are you one of those people who are not reliable? You have to come to a place where you are reliable. The last thing that I want to talk about today is the issue of character. Let your vision shape you into a character that people will be able not just to accept you, but as your vision grows and as your character grows, people can deal with you knowing that you are a person of integrity. Nothing is as bad as proclaiming to have a vision, but you do not have integrity. That's the thing. We have to see integrity. We have to, we have to come to a place where you know, your integrity is, 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 is something we can back on. The, you know, there are people that you, you can, there are people that you cannot, um, you cannot bank on them. <laughs> they are not reliable. So they, you wonder certain people why in as much as they are intelligent, but no one wants to work with them. They are talented. No one wants to work with them because they are not reliable. They do not have character and they do not have integrity. These are some of the keys that will make you to be, to be a person of value. If you can work out on these things, you will see your value increase. You will see yourself being at a place where many people would want to be around you. Why? Because you have worked on yourself and you have come, you, 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 you have raised yourself to a level where you are visible, acceptable, and also you are recommendable. Because if there is going to be an access flow of customers, contracts, and people wanting to work with you, you have to be a person who, after I work with you, I am able to recommend you. Ask your neighbor, are you a person who can be recommended? Are you a person who is recommendable? Have you served enough? Have you, have, have you, the, the people around you, how, how do people around you speak about you, even if they are under your vision? Do you know that you can be under a certain vision and you arrive there and workers will be telling you, we, we don't know what we'll be doing here. We are just waiting at the end of the month to be paid. There is no actual plan. There is no blueprint. There is no schedule of how we do things. We, we are just here. There is no vision at all. 
And th those are most of the organizations and businesses that you see them not going anywhere. You, you see them not going to the next direction. A vision that is not to affect the next gen generation is not a vision. It might just be an ambition. I believe beyond any doubt that as you are listening to me, you are getting to a place where God is giving you wisdom and understanding. I believe that as you are listening to me, you are getting to a place where you are increasing value in yourself and you are going to see yourself being increased. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is going to increase you a thousand times more. I pray for you that God increase you. I pray for you that God shows himself to be faithful in your life and in your destiny. You shall not see yourself go down. I'm decreeing and I'm declaring that you are increasing in value. You are increasing in integrity. You are increasing in character. People shall recommend your business. People shall recommend your business in the name and the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for I thank God. May God give you supernatural intelligence in the name and the blood of Jesus. May you have supernatural intelligence. May you be like Daniel, that among everybody who was in Babylon, Daniel was found to be different and to be having an excellent spirit. May you carry an excellent spirit. May you be like Joseph, that he enters in a place and is promoted without, without a lot of interest and qualifications. Why? Because you have been seen that you have increased your value. Your value will reward you. Your gifting will reward you. Your environment will reward you. Your association will reward you. And your character will reward you. May God bless you. May God be with you. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed.